All right, engineer. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over some specific types of titrations. And we'll talk about titration curves and the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which we haven't got to that yet, but now we're gonna go ahead and hit it in this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna react a strong acid with a strong base. So we're gonna do a titration, and what are we gonna do again? We're reacting a strong acid with a strong base. So we're doing a strong acid, strong base titration here. So if you do a strong acid, strong base titration, what's your products gonna be? Well, here, remember this. If I react a strong acid with a strong base, they're gonna neutralize each other. So it's a neutralization reaction. So what do you always get out of a neutralization reaction? You get a salt and water. What's my salt? Potassium is gonna combine with bromine, and hydrogen is combined with OH to give you water and potassium bromide. So what's my products out of this? I'm gonna get potassium bromide, and water. So this is a neutralization reaction. And remember, I have a one directional, unidirectional arrow because strong acids and strong bases react completely and completely disassociate. All right, so now, first question here. It wants us to calculate the initial pH of the HBr solution before any KOH is added. So what does that mean? That means I have a beaker. Let's say I have a beaker sitting right here. And what I'm doing is, I have in this beaker, I have some hydrobromic acid. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna slowly add, say I'm gonna slowly add here, I'm gonna drip in potassium hydroxide. That's basically what we're gonna do here in this reaction, we're titrating it. But, I want to know what's the pH of the solution before I add any of this uh, potassium hydroxide in. So in other words, I have potassium hydroxide here, right? Before I even start titrating any of this potassium hydroxide into the solution, what's the pH at that point before anything's added? Okay. Well, HBr is a strong acid, right? If H HBr is a strong acid, that means all of him completely disassociates into H plus and bromide ions. So all I got to do is the negative log of that. Well, what's his molarity? 0.175 molarity. So what is this then? A, all we're going to do is pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration, which is 0.175 molarity. And what is that answer? So this one's a simple calculation. Not too bad, right? Nothing too crazy with this one. Negative log of 0.175 molarity. And what do you get? You get 0.78. So you get about... 0.78. So that is our pH right there. So 0.78 for the pH before we add in any different types of, uh, before we add in any potassium hydroxide in. Next question. It says here in B, how much volume of potassium hydroxide is needed or required to reach the equivalence point? Well, before we even do that, what is equivalence point? What does it mean? Equivalence point, I want you guys to write this down and remember this. The equivalence point is when the moles of your acid equals the moles of your base. Okay? So in other words, the only time when I'd be at an equivalence point is when the moles of my HBr equal the moles of my potassium hydroxide. Well, how do I solve this problem? We're going to use this formula here called M1 V1 equals M2 V2. Okay, the M1, I'm actually gonna switch this up and I'm gonna put M1 and V1 is gonna be the molarity of HBr and V1 is gonna be the volume of HBr. M2 is gonna be the molarity of my potassium hydroxide and V2 is what I'm solving for which is the volume of my potassium hydroxide. Okay, let's plug everything in. What's the molarity? It is 0.175 molarity. What's my volume? 35 milliliters equals the molarity of my potassium hydroxide, which is 0.200 molar. And I'm solving for my volume. I'm just going to put VKOH here. And what do I do? I divide over this 0.200. And if I divide that over, my volume of potassium hydroxide is equal to what do I get whenever I divide this over that? So let's do that. Let's do 0.175 times 35. 
and divide that bad boy by 0.2 and I get 30.6. So since this was two figs, sig figs, let's round that to 31. So we'll do 31 milliliters of potassium hydroxide is needed in order for the moles of KOH to equal the moles of HBr. And I, you'll see how that happens. I'll show you here. In a, actually, I'll show you now real quick. What do I mean here? So if I take 31 mils, I got to get this into liters first. So 1,000 mils, 1 liter. What was the molarity of my potassium hydroxide again? It was 0.2. So for every 1 liter of solution, it's 0.200 moles of KOH. What do I get when I do this? So I'm just going to take 31. 31, and I'm going to multiply this by 0.2, and I'm going to divide this by 1,000. I get 0 0.0062. So I get 0 0.0062 moles of potassium hydroxide. So I'll put KOH here. How, what was the volume of our HBr? It was 35 milliliters. So the volume of my HBr is 35 mils. If I take 1,000 milliliters, one liter, and for every one liter it is 0.175 molarity, HBr. What do we get? Okay, we take 35, multiply it by 0.175, divide that by 1,000, and I get 0 0.0062. 0 0.0062 moles of HBr. You see how these two moles are equal to each other? That's because we're at the equivalence point. So in other words, the volume of KOH I need to add into this beaker, because right now I have sitting in here 35 mils, the amount that I need in order for this to be at the equivalence point is 31 milliliters. All right, cool. So that means the moles of our acid and our base are equal. So we did B. C, okay. They don't care about the volume to get to the equivalence point. They want to know another volume before that. So they're saying, what is the pH at 10 mils of added KOH? Okay, well, what, let's actually get the moles of our HBr here real quick. Let's actually write out this equation again. HBr plus KOH yields, again, what do we get? KBr and H2O. If we do that thing where we take 35 mils and we get it all the way out here to moles of HBr, what do we get? We get 0 0.0062 moles. KOH. Well, now I'm not worried about 31 milliliters. I'm starting with, what, 10 milliliters of added KOH. So now instead of 31, I need to make that 10. So I'm going to do 10 times 0 0.20 and divide that by 1,000. And I get 0 0.002. So what do I get out of this? I get 0 0.002 moles. Okay? And out of this one, I get 0 0.0062 moles. I'm going to react these two. But I have less of this potassium hydroxide. So all of this potassium hydroxide is going to react with the HBr. How much of it? I'm going to react all of this, 0 0.002 moles of KOH with this 0 0.0062 uh, moles of HBr. And what am I going to be left with? So I'll be left with 0 of this guy. And I'm going to take 0 0.0062 and subtract from it 0 0.002, so 0 0.0062 minus 0 0.002, and I get 0 0.0042. So what am I left with with HBr? 0 0.0042 moles. Okay, cool. I'm left with 0 moles of potassium hydroxide. What happens? 0 0.0042 moles right here is what I'm left with, but 0 0.0002 moles and 0 0.0002 moles goes over to form KBr. So I form 0 0.0042 moles of KBr. But guess what? KBr is a neutral salt because it comes from potassium hydroxide and hydrobromic acid. So he has nothing to do with the pH. He doesn't affect the pH. He's a neutral salt. What do I have left in my solution? Sitting in my beaker, what do I have left? 0 0.0042 moles of HBr. What am I going to do? I'm going to take the 0 0.0042 moles and I'm going to put that over the total volume that I added. So what did I start with? I started with 35 mils. What did I add? 10 milliliters. So I added all of this moles, it's sitting in 45 milliliters. What's 45 milliliters divided by 1,000? That's 0 0.045 liters. Because I need to get molarity. Because they want to know the pH, I need molarity. 
So I'm going to take that 0 0.0042 and uh, 0 0042 divided by 0 0.045. And what do I get out of this? I get 0 0.093 molarity. Let me write that out here, guys. 0 0.093 molarity. And what do I want? I want pH. So what do I do? I take the negative log of that. So negative log of that number right there gives me 1.03 for the pH. So pH is 1.03. And if you look, the pH should be going up because what was our pH initially? 0.78. We didn't add a lot of KOH, but we added some of it and it went up to 1.03. So that's a good sign. It means we're doing something right here. All right, so let's keep going. D, pH at the equivalence point. Okay, well, we said, what was the point of equivalence point? The moles of my acid and the moles of my base are equal. So in other words, if we come back to that point, let's actually redraw this equation again one more time. So for part D here, again, what happens here? I'm going to have HBr plus KOH yielding KBr plus water, and what happens? HBr at the equivalence point is 0 0.0062 moles. KOH at the equivalence point is 0 0.0062 moles. These two are one to one. They're both gonna react completely. So if we both react these completely, what's left of these guys? Nothing. What's left of him? Nothing. What happens? All of this 0 0.0062 moles goes to forming, goes to forming KBr. So I'm left with 0 0.0062 moles of KBr. But what did I say about KBr? He's a neutral salt. If he's a neutral salt, what's the neutral, what's the neutral number for a pH? Seven. So the pH at the equivalence point for a strong acid, strong base titration is seven. Put that ones deep into your cerebral cortex and memorize that one. Okay, so again, the pH at the equivalence point of a strong acid, strong base titration is seven. Okay, let's do this guy, E. What's the question? The pH after adding five milliliters of potassium hydroxide beyond the equivalence point. Let's do this next one. Okay, what do we say was the equivalence point? Volume for KOH, the amount that we needed to add. 31 milliliters, right? So I had to add 31 milliliters to get me to the equivalence point. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add five more milliliters beyond that point. So how many milliliters of potassium hydroxide did I really add? 36. So what do I have here? I have 36 milliliters of potassium hydroxide, a thousand milliliters, again, know you're using your metric conversions for every one liter, and for every one liter, what happens? It is 0 0.200 molarity. This is gonna give me the moles. What does this give us, guys? 36 times 0.2 divided by a thousand, I get 0 0.0072. Let me write that over here. 0 0.0072 moles. Okay, let's come over here. Let's continue E up here. So this is E continued. Okay, so let's write out the reaction. HBr plus KOH yields KBr plus water. And again, HBr, we only have 0 0.0062 moles of him. KOH, how much do we add? 0 0.00. 72 moles. So what happens here? He's the one who's actually in less amount now. So I'm going to use all of him up. And if I use all of him up, he's gone. And I'm only left with what? Point. So it's actually going to be 0 0.0010 moles left, right? And then what happens? 0 0.0062 moles will come over here and form KBr. But that doesn't matter because he's a neutral salt, so he doesn't even affect the pH. So what are we left with in the solution? What's left with in the beaker? We used up all the HBr, and now we have 0 0.0010 moles of potassium hydroxide. Let's write that out. 0 0.0010 moles of KOH. Now what? What's the total volume of this entire solution that I have right now? Okay, well I added, I had 35 milliliter sample of what? HBr. Then what did I do? I added a total of, so what did I have originally? I had 35 milliliters 
of the uh, HBr, but we need that in liters in order for this to be molarity, so it has to be 0 0.035. And then I added 36 total milliliters to get me beyond the equivalence point, right? It took me 31 to get to the equivalence point, and then I've added five beyond that, so that's 36. So that's plus 0 0.036 liters. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number and I'm going to put it over all this volume and I'm going to get the molarity. So let's go ahead and do that. So 0 0.0010 uh, divided by 0 0.035 plus 0 0.036. I get 0 0.0141. Let's write that out. 0 0.0141 molarity, KOH. And then what's the formula for this? Well, it's POH is equal to the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration, which is 0 0.0141 molarity. And what's the POH of this one? Let's plug that puppy in there, negative log of that bad boy. And we get a 1.85 POH. So we get 1.85. Then what do we do? We want pH. Well, pH is 14 minus 1.85. So I have to take 14 minus that. 14 minus 1.85. What do I get? 12.1. 12.1 is the pH beyond the equivalence point. So what do we get out of all this? We did a crap ton, right? So we did the pH at the initial pH before any base is added. And then in part B, we figured out what the volume was that we needed to be able to get us to the equivalence point, which was 31 milliliters. Then we tried to determine the pH when we added only 10 mils of potassium hydroxide. And when we did that, we got a pH of 1.03. And then we find out the pH at the equivalence point, which is always going to be 7. Remember, stick that into your cerebral cortex. And then E, we did what is the pH after adding 5 mils beyond the equivalence point, which is 12.1. So if you kind of look here, let's finish off with looking at a titration curve. So on the x-axis, I got the volume of the KOH that I added over time, right? And over here, I have the pH starting with 0 and working our way all the way up to 14. Well, what would it look like? Well, we started with a strong acid, so we're going to be down here close to, like, to, to zero, right? So we're looking like this. Then what happens? I start adding potassium hydroxide. And what, when did it actually, what did I do? I added that potassium hydroxide, and then look what happened when I got to the certain point here. It starts rising and rising at this inflection point, and then it starts going like this, right? So if you look here, what volume did I need to add to get me to that equivalence point? It was 31 milliliters. So right here, at this point right there, if I come up right there, right here at this point right there, that's the pH at equivalence point. And at the equivalence point, what is that? It's equal to 7. Okay, so again, this was my strong acid, strong base titration. Well, this is giving me my acidic level, right? So this, let's say that this point right here, I could actually say that this point right here, because it's, it's slowly rising, nothing crazy. It's just going to have this slow rise like that. This slow rise is before the equivalence point. Here at that middle point right there, the pH of 7 is actually going to be at the equivalence point. And over here is beyond the equivalence point. Okay, so that gives me my strong acid, strong base titration, where I'm using HBr and potassium hydroxide. So this is about what it's going to look like. Remember, at the equivalence point when you're doing a strong acid, strong base, the equivalence point is 7. All right, so that's what this titration curve will look like. All right, guys, in the next video, we're going to do a weak acid and a strong base titration following all of these similar acts here. All right, so click up in the right corner, and I'll see you guys there.